My name is Gladriel Crump. I grew up on a little farm out in Wisconsin, where I still am. And it happened in, um, I had gotten taken out of school about the end of fourth grade year. And I was really excited because it was going to be like an online school. And that was like new back then. So I was excited that I like didn't really have to worry about going to school. And I'm like, oh, sweet. That means I could sleep in because like, you know, my parents were, my mom was always working and my dad was really sick. So I was just kind of like left to my own devices and I could basically do whatever really on the farm. I mean, we were hobby farmers. So that's why my mom was always at work. He stopped really taking care of the animals. And my sister that was with me started going to her job and wouldn't take care of the animals either. So I like, I should take care of these guys now. And I guess it was in December and, you know, in Wisconsin, it gets really cold. There's like different zones of coldness. It's like close to the Canada level of cold. And it was one of the coldest nights. There was a winter weather advisory. And even on the nights that there weren't winter weather advisories, the farmhouse, you know, it being cold and drafty and very old. So it's around Christmas time and there was a full moon out and there was a storm. And I remember my dad being like, yeah, you know, there's that winter weather advisory. We got to go put all the animals in the barn. So I had both my sisters and one of them was older and it was around dinner time. And I think the storm was starting to like taper off and get less intense. And nobody wanted to go outside to take care of the animals or like bring them in the barn. And I'm like, well, the animals I'm sure are freezing their butts off. Like we should go take care of them. And everybody was like putting up a fight and they're like, oh, they can hold on. Like they've been outside before on cold nights. Like they got their animal fat and fur and stuff in their winter coats and I don't know it's just it didn't sit right by me because we've had animals like have frostbite before and I got to see how much like how sad and painful it must be to have that so I I was like you know what I'll go outside I'll start rounding them up and bringing them inside like I said we were hobby farmers and so the farm 82 acres and we have our, our like our cows it's not a very big herd maybe like 30 40 animals but they they split up they did have a leader cow because oftentimes cow herd will be all together but they split up because they split up because the leader cow went crazy over a pet pig that we had they formed their little friendship groups and i had to be like okay i think there's some hiding in the trees over here i think there's some in the back 40 over here and so i had to walk all over <laughs> and um not being aware of the dangers of the cold but only knowing that well it doesn't matter if i get cold because i'll just get warm having that knowing and having that rush that I was like, well, I got to rush and I got to get these animals in the barn because I don't like the cold. They don't like the cold and I want to make them be warm and be happy. And I mean, my family didn't really pay attention to me getting ready to go outside. I don't remember if I had gloves or not, but I just remember that I put the yellow jacket on. I slipped my, I put like two pairs of socks on because I'm like, I don't like having cold feet. So then I'm outside, I round up all the animals, bring them inside. And it was, I gotten all the animals closest to the barn in and then I went out to the pasture and I would make my round. I'd start at the top of the tallest hill and I'd go down and into the valley and into the other valley and do some of the trees, get the cows all rounded up. I'm following them home and we're walking through the snow and a couple of them are tripping on the on the snow and I'm following them and I start tripping on my own feet and I, I start feeling like kind of hot and like really tired. I start giggling because <laughs> I'm like laughing at like how I'm just like tripping on my own feet and just everything seems really, really funny. I'm tripping on stuff because I must just be really sleepy. I hate to say it, like <laughs> being neglected. Or I had the ability to just go to sleep whenever I wanted to sleep and like nap whenever I wanted. And so I did not have a good sleep schedule. And so I was often tired anyways. And so that's what I, I just kind of attributed it to. And um, I got all the animals in the barn and they're all tied up. And I started throwing the hay bales down for them to eat and throwing some straw down so that we could lay it, put it, make a bed for them in their stalls. At this point, I had taken off my jacket and I was just wearing, I think probably just like a long sleeve shirt. I don't remember the shirt. And I had tied the jacket around my waist. I can't control my extremities very well. And I, <laughs> I remember being like really frustrated that I couldn't like lift the bale properly because my arms kept giving out or I wasn't able to like lift my arm how I wanted. And I couldn't close or open my hands and I can't walk the way that I want. And I felt really dizzy and I started feeling a little bit nauseous as well. And my sister, Juby, comes out and I'm like, finally, there you guys are. Why didn't you help me? You guys took so gosh darn long. And she's mad at me for not wearing my jacket she's put your jacket on and i go no <laughs> and and she's like why are you why are you slurring your words 
And she's like, why are you talking like that? Like, she just thinks I'm being sassy. I mean, I was. I was, didn't want to put my jacket on, but, like, I wasn't slurring my words on purpose. I couldn't talk. <laughs> and she got mad at me. And she was like, Dad, she's slurring her words and she's not walking right and she's not putting on her jacket and my dad was like oh go inside and warm up is what he said and i was like oh i'm fine you know and he's like no, go inside and i'm like oh, okay <laughs> and so i but i walk inside i hang that up and my mom's making dinner she asked me how i was you know why am i inside you know they just went outside and i said i i don't feel good i think i'm gonna go lay down and take a nap and can you wake me up when food's ready? And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. So I go upstairs and it's, well, it's cold. <laughs> and I just remember, you know, I'm still hot. I'm still tired. I'm still sick. And I lay down in bed and I, I start to fall asleep. And then suddenly I wake up <laughs> or I thought I woke up. It felt just kind of like sitting up like this. But like, I guess I came out of my head. I just, it just felt like I, I rose up out of my body. It just felt like I sat up and everything was super vivid colors. I was in my bedroom and I'm like, oh, I guess I wasn't that tired. I feel great. I'm going to go see what mom's making. As soon as I thought that, I shot downstairs. And at that, I didn't even consider like, I, that was really fast. You know, I didn't think about any of it. It just was natural. And it felt right. Like, you know, it just was right. It was like being awake and how that's kind of how I explained it. It was like being awake, except I didn't have a body, you know, <laughs> like I didn't I didn't have the words or the vocabulary to explain it when I was a kid. But I, I'm downstairs in the kitchen and I see my mom. She's still making food and I can just kind of tell like the intention that she had for it. I could just sense that it's like, oh, cook food go watch TV, cook food, go watch TV. It's like, okay, that's boring. <laughs> I'm like, and uh, she had this like kind of, I don't know, I want to say like orangish kind of light around her. And it just, again, I didn't really pay much attention to it. And I thought back to myself, oh, I guess I'm going to go back up to my room. And when I thought that, I zoop right back to my room. You know, I'm back in my room. I see my body laying there just asleep. The blanket's off of me because, you know, like I said, I fell asleep hot. So I was like, oh, that, that person looks peaceful. And like, I didn't really assume it was me or anything like that. I just was like, that person looks peaceful and asleep. I didn't take note of anything. I didn't see any light around the body or my body. But then I, again, was looking around my room and I'm like, oh, wow, it's just so bright from that, that full moon that's outside. And I look out the window and I see this beautiful light that's kind of like filling, I don't know, <laughs> filling the air and everything. And this, there was a lot of snow on the ground. Obviously, it had just been snowing. The light was bouncing off of the snow. And how I would describe the light is very similar to this all-spectrum light that I have growing up with the plants. Kind of how it like shines off of the couch. That's kind of why I sat here because I'm like, this, I didn't realize it, but... When I first got this grow light, because this is the, it's like the purple, it's got all the colors in it. They call it the full spectrum light. And this is the closest to that color that I've seen. And it brings me a lot of peace. And so that's why I'm like, I like this and I, I keep it on like all day. <laughs> but this, this kind of color light was hitting the snow. And I was like, oh, that looks really pretty. I want to see it up close. And then I just zoop right through the wall and everything. And just suddenly I was like right in front of the snow, like this close to the snow, staring at it. And I was like, oh, that's so pretty. And I see the moon and it's like extra bright. And it's just like a white, bluish kind of this color all coming out. And I think that's gorgeous. And I wondered to myself, I wonder what it's like to live on the moon. And then kind of like getting Bush just kind of <laughs> went through this vortex thing after I had that thought and I would say the colors of that probably like gray and black not colorful that I can remember I don't know how long but that was a lot it took a lot longer to get through that but I went through that and then I was on the moon and or what I thought was the moon and I was like oh this is so cool and I was walking around and I'm like wow look at this giant crater I'm in a giant crater and I'm like oh the moon is so colorful and bright and Oh, and I just was taken back by it. And then I realized, wait, I don't feel like I'm alone anymore. And I, my attention turned toward these like three giant beings. And I suppose, you know, there was a, another lady who had a 
NDE and she shared her story of, of these three that she, she had seen them too. And that's what made me so excited that I'm like, ha, I'm not alone that other people have seen these too. And I, I have no idea who they are, what they are. That would be great to know or hear theories of, honestly, because I, you know, I didn't think to ask them or anything. I just was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's normal. You know, there they are. There's other energy with me. But the form that I suppose, I'll just say the form they took, you know, was these humongous, I don't know, I want to say like skyscraper size beings. And they had like, it was like a blue or light blue kind of whitish color to them their energy kind of looked like a robe like as if my shirt was made out of light or something and it just was all flowy and stuff i don't really have a good vocabulary for it i wish i had one and they were like sitting on craters or whatever and uh, one gets up and kind of comes over to me and i'm looking up at it then they don't have faces they don't really have clothes you know but it's it, but they kind of look like they might have the appearance of wings behind them, but like they don't use them. And now I'm thinking perhaps they took that because it was a very peaceful looking kind of demanding look. I'd say the energy that they gave off, I think it wasn't scary or anything. It was more so kind of like if you have like a pet that you love very much or like a child. Like for me, I'm a mom. I'm like I compare it to how I look at my kid when they're super innocent, they don't know much about anything. I want to teach them things and I want to show them as much as I can. And I like, I'm there for them. And it's just this so much, like it makes me want to cry thinking about it. There's so much love and peace and patience. It was very nice. The one is towering over me. The other two are still kind of in the background. And this one I would say is kind of like a, I don't know, it felt, I don't know, I want to use like male, female energy, but like a male energy. I mean, obviously they didn't have faces, they didn't have clothes, they didn't really have a gender, they're just energy, but it's the type of energy, like it's very logical and calm and protective. And like, I'm going to teach you and help you. It was like, what did you think of your life? <laughs> and I was like, oh, it was awful. It sucks. Like I got beat. And I, this, that, the other thing. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, and then I was like, well, it's, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing, but like, it's not the best. And I'm like, I, I do like living out in the country, but I just don't, you know, like everything that a 10 year old can talk about. Like, I like this and this and this, but I don't like all these other things. But it was like, well, what'd you learn from that? Because we're all here to learn something. And I was like, well, I guess I did learn, you know, that at that point I learned selflessness how to be selfless. You know, I was selfless with the animals. I didn't want to be outside, you know, but I was like, I got to take care of these these guys because nobody else is taking care of them. I learned to be kind to people that I wasn't really a fan of, like my family. <laughs> but we eventually, I, I'm not sure what we talked about at that point, but we, we got to then look at pieces like memories uh, and not really a, exactly a life review, I guess, but like more just like, here are some traumatic memories of yours and we're gonna look at them and I won't share those because I don't need to. They don't really teach mo anybody else much because it's more so what's important for my soul to learn. And a lot of people talk about it with their near-death experiences that when you go through your memories, you definitely 100% feel what you made somebody else feel and you understand that there is karma attached to every choice that you make. After going through these memories, they were like, do you want to go back? Do you want to see what else there is? What do you want to do? And I was like, I can go back. And I'm like, I don't want to go back. <laughs> and I was like, what else is there? I'm a very curious person and I want to know as much as I can. And they're like, well, you can see these other lives. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I'm like, but no, 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 I don't think I should because I think I kind of do want to go back. And I had an emotional connection to my mom. And I think I'm not very religious at all, but there is a quote in the Bible that is, what you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. What you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense because my I was energetically bound to my mom basically through emotions, which are energy. I didn't really want to give that up yet. I had learned that <laughs> this is weird, but in another life, my mom was my husband and I was, I was her wife. 
So, you know, and like, it's interesting how we keep interacting with these souls in each life. But again, my spirit, when they asked me if I wanted to see other lives, I said no, because I still had a feeling that like, yeah, I really don't want to have to deal with all of the trauma. And I know there's going to be more trauma if I go back home. But, you know, I really want to go do something else. That'd be great. But I do want to, if I have the option, go back because it, it really wasn't as bad as some of these other lives that could be worse. You know, I didn't want to be envious of any other life that my energy would have. And they made it very clear that, yes, you know, we definitely have your ties to things will hold you back. It kind of goes hand in hand with the um, the seven deadly sins, which is like envy, greed, gluttony, pride, sloth, wrath, pride, I think those hold you back for sure. And they were like, you know, since you're traumatized, you know, you're going to grow up and, and have to deal with all of these things. And it's going to be tough. Are you sure? <laughs> and I was like, I'm sure I want to be able to work through it. I don't know for sure about going back. And they were like, well, I mean, we can make changes. We can edit it, you know? And I guess river appeared. I got the sense that like, oh, the river represents our human perception of time. And I couldn't see the beginning of the river. I couldn't see the end of the river either. I guess they like manifested a rock or whatever, but there, there was a, ro a big rock on the end of the river. And that represented when I would die next like when I'm old there was another rock at the one end and that represented me choosing to go back and they were like you can make decisions and your decisions will be like these little stones and I guess they were trying to explain karma to me the child version of me I just got to throw like little stones in and and I was like I I want this to happen I want this to happen and I know that we talked about things that I wanted to happen and things that needed to happen and because I remember like the emotional sensation of it but I don't remember what we talked about probably for a good reason but I remember that there were like these two little stones I was holding and I'm like these are two decisions and two things I really really want to happen and at the same like I want them to happen and they were like well you gotta make a decision on it and uh I tossed one in and uh <laughs> this being picks up this giant rock that goes boulder because I mean they're big and uh tosses in this boulder into the river and it goes splash and they're like because you made that decision or you made that choice now this is happening and i'm like what <laughs> I'm like, i don't want all, like all that to happen and they're like well that's what happens there is an effect right? you know there's consequences for your actions and your intentions have consequences as well if karma happened almost immediately we would notice it and we would realize how serious it is but it doesn't happen right away <laughs> and so we don't realize how serious it is but I just remember that there were a few times that I had made choices that had effects that I wasn't a big fan of, but realized it needs to happen. I know for sure one of the things that I wanted to happen was I wanted to take care of my mother and I wanted to make sure I, I got the chance to have a healthy family. And that's what I have right now is a healthy little family. And they kind of explained that everything follows a pattern. After these, if we did the whole rocks thing and like the whole explaining of, you know, I'm going to have a lot of troubles and things to face and overcome. And I was afraid that, you know, go, coming back into my body, I'm going to have all these troubles and all these things. And I'm like, what if I don't remember this experience? What if my brain just is mush because of all of the issues that I'm going to have as an adult because of my childhood? Like, what about all these things? And they're like, well, we can make it so that you can remember things when the time is right, when you need to, and and we'll, you'll know. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I don't remember if we talked about what I needed or what they would do for me to help me remember, but they let me have that peace. Then they're like, okay, it's time to go back. And I kind of just was like, oh, okay, step into the river and that'll bring me back. And so I did. I kind of like stepped into it and it was back, sucked back down through that. It's what it seemed like. And I was, I was in my room again and I saw myself laying there and I was like that, you know, I should touch myself, you know, get in there and I'm back in my body and it's cold and it's dense and I feel heavy and I'm shivering again and I'm like oh this is awful <laughs> and I run downstairs 
and I sit near the fire and I grab a blanket, cuddle up. My mom comes over and she's like, oh, you know, and she's like, it's not ready yet. You must have, you didn't nap for very long. And I was like, I know. <laughs> and uh, I didn't tell her then. I didn't tell my family for a long time until uh, we were in the car and I heard the song uh, by Thriving Ivory, Angels on the Moon. And that made me remember them because, you know, after this experience, I just was fascinated by the moon. I would always stare at it. But that song came on and that made me be like, oh, I got to tell my family about this. I just remember my sister being a fussy turd <laughs> and being mad that uh, my parents had their attention set on me because they were, they were like, it's, you know, as I explained the story to them when I was a kid, I just remember my mom kind of like crying in the car because I, I had more details then. It was much more fresh in my mind. But she, I just remember my mom thanking me like, oh, thank you for choosing to come back <laughs> is what she said because she's like, she started crying and she was like, I don't know what I would have done if I had fully lost you. And my sister was like, what the heck could you even have died from? My dad was like, well, it is really cold in the house. And they had come to the conclusion that it was a death. There was a lot of things that happened after it, but I, you know, you don't really want to focus on that too much. But I guess that there was the, the dreams. I called them future dreams when I was a kid. I noticed that I have them the most when I'm taking care of my body and I'm eating healthy and I'm taking my vitamins and I'm not drinking alcohol because <laughs> as soon as I stopped drinking alcohol I noticed that I could start feeling things like other people's emotions and not, not just my own emotions and example I guess would be I had my coworker come in to work one day and I was I had just opened the restaurant and I was getting food ready and everything and I, I thought I was alone I was happy and I was singing to myself I hear him like stomp through but before I even heard him I, I felt this like wave of sadness and just it, it felt like pressure on my body and I was like oh that's really I'm really sad and like kind of angry like what's going on and then he stomped by but he had had his his grandpa had passed and he was he had a lot of negative energy about it and he was really sad the end message I'd probably want to share is just to reiterate that the I don't want to say seven deadly sins but really, that's what they are. The seven deadly sins are those emotional ties to things. They really do bind you and like your spirit to be careful what you have an emotional tie to, I suppose. The golden rule is super important because that's karma. Yeah, I think that's about it. We all fall.